A Ghost Named Fred by Nathaniel Benchley. George had nothing to play with. The boys who lived near him were either too old or too young. So he had to make up his own games. One day he would be a pirate. Other day, another day he would be a pilot. The tub would be his submarine. And in the bed he was a bear in a cave. One day George played. He was an astronaut in orbit and he got a long way way away from home it began to get dark and he didn't know how to get back then it started to rain george saw an old house in the darkness i guess i had better go there he said if I don't, I'll get my feet wet and probably catch a cold. So he went to the house and knocked, but there was no answer. Just the sound of rain and thunder. The door was unlocked. George pushed it and it looked inside. It was dark, but it was also dry. I will just go in for a minute, George said, until the rain stops. The house was so cold and smelled like smelled of dust and damp. George felt that something was near coming near him, but he couldn't see it. Whatever it was, he didn't like it. He went into another room, but still he felt like something came coming closer. It made his skin feel cold and his hair began to prickle. I think I'll go upstairs, he said. There will be something wrong. There is something wrong down here. He went up the stairs. Just as he reached the top of the stairs, he heard a voice behind him. It said, do you mind telling me what that thing that is on your head? Who is that? said George. Who are you? Right behind you, said the voice. Look here, George George looked and saw two eyes. Who are you? he said. Asked the eyes. Are you a ghost? Yes, the eyes replied. But I'd rather have you call me Fred, and I st still want to know what is on your head. Oh, that said George. I, I I have forgotten about that. It is my hat I used when I, I was playing astronaut. Please take it off, said Fred. It makes me, your voice sound so odd. So George took off the hat. Is that better, he asked. Much, Fred replied. You have a nice voice. If you give it a chance, thank you, said George. Nobody ever told me that before. What brings you here? asked Fred. This is a pla this is no place for a boy a boy alone. I got lost, said George. What about you? Why are you here? It's a long story, Fred replied, but to be brief about it, I am here to guard some treasure. Treasure, cried George. Where is it? I wouldn't be much of a guard if I told you, said Fred. I am going to let you guess. Is it in the attic, George asked? No. The cellar? No. The kitchen? No. The bedroom? No. Then I give up. Where is it? Fred made a little coughing sound. To tell the truth, I've forgotten, he said. I was hoping you would remind me. Then let's look, said George. You're sure it's in the house? Just about it, said Fred. I saw it once, but that was a long time ago. Let's try downstairs. 
They went downstairs in the pantry and they found three mice. Have you seen the treasure, George asked. We are not interested in treasure, the mice replied. We are looking for cheese. You came to the wrong house, said Fred. There hasn't been cheese here since the party my mother gave for her aunt. Just our luck, said the mice, and they left. The lot in the library, they found an old bat hanging upside down. Charlie, Fred said to the bat, "You have you have been here a long time. Do you remember where the treasure is?" My father knew," said Charlie, "but he hasn't been." Seen since last Halloween. If he ever comes back, I'll ask him. That's no help," said Fred. "We want to find it now. Come help us look." "All right," said Charlie. "It's time I flew away. If I hung here too much longer, I would have gone a nosebleed." So the three of them went all through the house, but saw no sign of a treasure in the front hall. Was a clock, and George said, "Oh, I'm late. I must begin home. You better take an umbrella," said Fred. "There is one in the closet here, there." So George took the umbrella and opened it. Out poured the treasure. "That's it!" cried cried Fred. "Fred, you found it." George counted out the treasure, and Fred. Let him take one coin home as a souvenir. But on thinking it over, George decided he wouldn't show it to anyone. He just kept it in his pocket as a secret. The end.